guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to talk about one of the interviews particular to data scientists, especially product data scientists at tech companies, the product case interview. Product case interviews are a mixture of technical and non-technical skills. So cracking those interviews requires you to be at your best in both areas. This video will explore both tips and red flags to help you do just that. These suggestions come from my own time as interview candidate, as well as my experience interviewing candidates and doing mock interviews. By the time you finish this video, you will know what to do and what to avoid the next time you find yourself in a product case interview. Let's get started with tips for product case interviews. Before we dive in too deeply, I want to start with a slightly unconventional tip. It's okay to make mistakes. Yes, you heard me right. It's okay to make mistakes. If you bring up a concept that you thought would make sense, then turns out it's not, the best way is to admit it. Sometimes your first solution will prove flawed, and it's far better to admit that rather than continuing to pursue a bad answer. For example, you get a question on which metric to use to measure the success of a new feature, and you realize the metric you just mentioned does not make too much sense after a second thought. You could say something like, I now realize it's a little arbitrary, it does not reflect what we really want to measure here, and I think a better metric is something else. It can feel awkward to admit a mistake in an interview, but you do not want to waste time talking about things you don't fully believe in. Now, if you consistently make mistakes and frequently have to correct yourself, it will leave an impression that you are not able to defend your ideas. However, making one or two mistakes during an interview is not the end of the world or your chances as a candidate. Next, quality is more important than quantity. What I mean by this is that there's no need to provide too many ideas. For example, when you're asked to come up with metrics for an ape test, providing five metrics is not as good as providing three solid metrics. What I mean by solid is that you have a clear definition of the metric. For instance, when you say customer retention, you need to define what an active user is, in what time period you are measuring the retention, and why, rather than just briefly say, I'll use customer retention to measure success. It shows a lack of understanding and a lack of rigor. Typically, providing three ideas for a question is good enough. Instead of trying to add too many ideas, focus on having a clear description for each of them. The next tip is to ensure that you interact with the interviewer. The interviewer is the only person you want to convince during that limited amount of time, so make sure that the interviewer fully understands you. Remember, an interview is not a report. You want to engage the interviewer. They may not agree with every single idea you have, but you want to showcase your problem-solving skills and strong communication skills. But how do you achieve this? You could start by briefly sharing multiple ideas first, and then ask the interviewer where to share more details. For example, if a question is a broad question, such as, how do you design an experiment? You can say, I can think of selecting the right metric, obtaining the minimum detectable effect, choosing the randomization unit, calculating the sample size, etc. Is there anything you want me to talk about specifically? Then let the interviewer choose which part to dive into. This is an effective approach because time is limited during interviews. Also, after you spend a minute or two explaining your ideas, you could check in with the interviewer by asking things like, does it make sense to you? And do you want me to explain more about it? Interacting with the interviewer and asking these kind of questions can help you provide answers to the point. Next, always clarify questions. It's so important, I'm going to say it twice, always clarify questions. You need to make sure you fully understand the question before answering so that you and the interviewer are on the same page. In fact, this is not only important in interviews, it's also important in reality. When you get a question from other people or other teams, you don't just react to it, you want to understand the context and where the question comes from before providing suggestions. Anyways, that's a different topic. Let's focus on the tip and let me give you an example. One common use metric click through rate is used to measure the performance of advertisements. Normally, it is calculated by the total number of clicks over the total number of impressions. However, in reality, sometimes it may refer to the percentage of users who click out of all the users who view an advertisement. It's worth clarifying which definition the interviewer would like to use. You could simply say, 
Just to confirm, when we say click-through rate, the definition, we define it as the number of clicks over the number of impressions rather than the percentage of users who click out of all users who view that ad. Clarifying can go beyond just the definition of a metric though. A few other clarifying questions you could ask are, what is the goal of a feature or a product? How does a particular feature work? What data do we have to support a finding, etc.? The information you get from the interviewer is important. Sometimes, the interviewers may not answer your questions directly. Instead, they may ask, what do you think? In that case, you can talk about your understanding and assumptions and ask if it makes sense. For example, you can say, my understanding of the goal of this new feature is twofold. One is to increase engagement on the platform, and the other one is to drive long-term revenue. Is my understanding correct? Know that this doesn't mean you want to ask obvious questions, questions that you can easily find answers online. For example, if you interview with Facebook, don't ask what is Facebook newsfeed or what is a Facebook group. If you interview with Quora, don't ask if you can upvote or downvote an answer. That shows that you haven't done enough research on the company or its products. But it's totally fine to confirm your understanding of a specific feature. For example, some Facebook groups allow any users to join, but some groups are invite only. The final tip is to ask the interviewer for a couple minutes to write something down and structure your communication before answering. Typically, less than three minutes is fine. Once you have a rough idea of what you will talk about, you could provide a structure and a summary before diving into details. This is very helpful to keep the interviewer on track. If you cannot think of anything to talk about after three minutes, you can take more time to think about it. It's better to be silent than to talk about random ideas or ideas you don't believe in. You may be wondering, what if I spend five minutes and I still don't have any ideas? If that happens, it is a pretty good indication that you needed more training and practice before the interview. If you take time to study and prepare, you will have some ideas in interviews. Front load the work with your preparation so that you can avoid this scenario. Now that we have talked about tips, I want to share with you a few red flags in product case interviews so that you know what things to avoid in this kind of interview. The biggest red flag is that you have no idea at all how to approach the problem. Even after you spend a few minutes thinking about it, you still say, I don't know, or you keep saying, can I get a hint for multiple questions? This almost guarantees that you will get a no from the interviewer. Now, to clarify, this is different from the situation that you don't have any idea the moment you get the question. This is normal, and you can start by asking clarifying questions and using the information given by the interviewer to come up with some ideas. I know some people become so nervous during an interview that they cannot think logically. If you are this kind of person, I have two tips for you. One is to remember that an interview is a conversation. Try to forget about the fact that the interviewer determines if you get an offer or not. You can tell yourself that it's a conversation with a colleague or a friend and there's nothing to be afraid of by talking with a friend. The other tip is simply that you need more practice. Try to do many mock interviews with different people before the real interview. I know some people who are very good at product case interviews have done dozens of mock interviews before the actual interview. Once you can overcome the fear and the nervousness, you can talk about your ideas with ease and even enjoy explaining your ideas. Another red flag is actually the opposite of the first one candidates who have too many ideas. This is also a huge red flag, but why? One reason is that when you share many ideas, your ideas may sound random and the interviewer may feel overwhelmed. The other reason is that if you share too many ideas, it results in a lack of depth in each of them. During product case interviews, the goal is to showcase your deep understanding of a company's product and your problem-solving skills. So depth is more important than breadth. If you have many ideas, you can say something like, this is a very good question, and I can think of four ideas, A, B, C, and D. Let me know which one you want me to dive into. The next red flag is making it obvious that you are using a framework and following your framework blindly. You may even have learned some helpful frameworks from me, but you never want to make it obvious that you are using a framework without considering the context of the problem. If you do, many interviewers will try to destructure you and see how you are able to perform. 
Following frameworks is also a problem because frameworks are generic and questions are specific. Thinking about solutions to solve a particular problem is more important than following a framework. In fact, this goes back to the tips we already discussed, ask clarifying questions and interact with the interviewer. The context and information you get from the interviewer is much more important than following the framework blindly. The last red flag I want to share with you is not being able to defend yourself. This refers to being unable to answer follow-up questions, feeling unsure about your ideas, or frequently changing your arguments. For instance, when the interviewer asks you why you choose metric A over metric B, you say something like, oh, I think metric B is better. Yet when the interviewer asks you why you change it back to metric A or don't have a good reason. Another example is the interviewer asking you about why you think the network effect makes the treatment effect an underestimation. You don't know how to analyze it or you become too nervous and you say maybe it's an overestimation. This gives the impression that you did not think your answer is through. You will not convince the interviewer that you have strong problem solving skills if you cannot defend yourself. Now you have learned the top four red flags in product case interviews. Don't be stressed out if you find you are making those mistakes when you practice with mock interviews. That's the goal of practice, right? Practice helps you to identify where you are doing great and where you can improve. The good thing is that you catch the red flag before the real interview. The more practice you do, the more aware you will be about your mistakes and the more chances you have to correct them. We have covered a lot in this video, so let's do a quick recap of the tips and red flags for product case interviews. My top 5 tips for product case interviews are It's okay to make mistakes. Quality is better than quantity. Interact with the interviewer. Always ask clarifying questions and ask the interviewer some time to structure your answer. With these tips, you can ensure that you deliver quality answers and keep you and the interviewer on the same page. Now, moving on to the things to avoid. The four red flags from this video are not being able to answer at all, having too many ideas, following a framework blindly, and not being able to defend yourself. If you want to put your best foot forward in a product case interview, you should avoid these things. The best way to learn to use these tips and avoid these red flags is with practice. Mock interviews are a great way to learn your strengths and weaknesses so that you can improve before it really counts. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and stay tuned by subscribing to my channel for more videos on interview preparation and job searching. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.